Yeah, go figure. Your guts invert. Why does Timothy have to be here with his friends now? Why now? Hey, Mara. You can't speak. Not even a Jackson. Timothy has taken everything away from you. Your internet, your grace, your games, your sense of peace in this house. And now, when you finally have your exercise tape, when your life is finally on track somewhere, he's taken over the living room with his friends? Why is your little sister staring at us? What do you want, Mara? Well? I want to use the TV. No. It's my turn. You get to use everything in this house. I want the TV. You've got till the count of three to get out of here. Dude. One. I'm not a child. Two. You're really gonna kick my ass in front of everyone? Three! Better use the TV, Tim. Yeah, we don't care. You want to put on your stupid crap? Go ahead. Oh, great. While well, they're all here, huh? Doesn't sound like a recipe for disaster or anything at all. I wish I knew where your anger comes from. <laughs> Don't overwork yourself, Mara. Exercise requires pacing. Maybe it's the endorphins, but you're overcome by a sense of clarity. There are no rights in this house. Only a primal struggle for power. Timothy does whatever he's allowed to do. He takes whatever he's free to take. You can only assert what is rightfully yours if you have the strength to take it. He will always be bigger than you, though. Strength is on his side. But you know his ways. And you know the land. You will get your internet back. This seems real bad. Let's go on the computer before we do it. Okay. Your internet is disabled, and you're too wired to stare at the screen longingly. Now is the time to fix it. I'm scared that we're about to go to Timothy's room. At this hour, you risk disturbing Mom, or worse, Timothy, by turning on the TV, and you just don't have the energy for either possibility. Yep, we're going to his room. Pressing an ear to the door, you confirm that Timothy is in his bedroom, snoring loudly. You're not going to be able to open the misshapen, squeaky door without waking him, though. Of this you are certain. If only there was another way in. Hmm. If only there was another way in. No, it's not, not going around like that. What would another way in be? Hmm. We're not going to use the front door either, are we? Hmm. I don't really think there's any way we can go around that's going to bring us to the back side of the house or anything. It is interesting to navigate the, uh, the town at night, though. Wow, Billy's Bar is still playing the same music. Hmm. 
it would be weird to go to Simon's house at this point. Right? Yet here we are walking. The door is locked. Simon's either out or asleep. Figures. And the group that was camping is in their tent. I think there is simply something I haven't figured out about Timothy's room. Or maybe there's an item I have to use in the door. Hmm. Mm hmm. I don't have that many things. Got seeds. Eh, probably not. Probably not any item that I have. Other way in. Maybe it is substantial that we're allowed to leave right now. Is there anything else to see or do around town? Yeah, party's still bumping at night. Figures. Hmm. The panel under the sink is sealed tightly by four Phillips head screws. You can't pry it open with your bare hands. Okay. That's a lead. Um. Where am I gonna find a screwdriver? I haven't seen one yet. I don't think I'm going to be making one. <laughs> mm, I don't think I'm going to be making one. So. Your driver. It's also night and I can't go to Simon's place. Where am I going to find a screwdriver? Oh! There we go. Never thought that mess of pixels looked conspicuous. Looking around, you cautiously grab the screwdriver. This thing could come in handy. Certainly hasn't accomplished much here. Huh, I wonder if that was... Like, there even in the spring. Probably not, there were guys there. Okay. Let's open up a wall panel. I mean, what else are we gonna do? We are a determined little 15, almost 16 year old. Taking care not to strip the heads, you gently remove the screws one by one and peel off the wall panel. <laughs> oh, this is so much. <laughs> oh my god, the game finally prompts me to save. Okay. Let's be observant first. This is the router that connects all the cables in the house to a common phone line. Mom's computer in the kitchen, yours, and Timothy's computer all meet up here. In theory, that is. At the moment, it seems you are not connected at all. The monitor glows with a screensaver, signaling that the computer has been left on overnight for some purpose. Timothy's tower is custom built with fairly state of the art parts. At least better than the ones yours has. It has a 56k modem, which 
runs online file transfer twice as fast as his old modem, which is now yours. Actually, all of your computer parts are inherited from Timothy. He taught you how to build your first PC, how to navigate MS-DOS and direct access, uh, a pre-Windows menuing shell. Your nerves vibrate with discomfort, having a moment of fondness for your brother under the disdainful circumstances that brought you here. The floor is blanketed in dirty laundry and trash, making navigating it at night all the more treacherous. There's a mountain of clutter on this chest of drawers, mostly unsorted toys and memorabilia. You're not sure why Timothy has a Furby. You expect it's some kind of tinker toy for him, a way to demonstrate his ironic detachment from the trend. You dare not investigate further, as robotic guts and hollowed insides are genuinely frightening to you. The bedside table is stacked with dishes and utensils, the whereabouts of which Mom probably frets over daily. I want to leave. The array of pop culture posters on the wall betray Timothy's nerdy inclinations, as if the collectible figurines weren't working hard enough. A shelf displays various collectible creatures Timothy has amassed, mostly from the fantasy genre with a few video game characters thrown in. Given how rare these are to come by in stores, you guess your brother has procured most of these online or in the city. This collection is actually one of the things you've most admired about your brother. Of course, he never lets you touch or see them. Timothy is fast asleep in his bed, belting a phlegmy snore that both repulses and, given the sneaky circumstances, puts you at ease. I don't think there's anything else left to see, except looking at his bed. You admittedly find Timothy's bed very comfortable. When the two of you were little, you used to have sleepovers on opposite ends of the bed. He put on music, read books, and let you play with a few of his toys under heavy supervision. When Timothy had longer school hours than you, and it seemed a little less dangerous, you used to sneak into his bedroom for a nap. Never had a pair of sheets as worn, pilled, or soft as these. Okay, I think it's about time we try doing something with this router. The router connects multiple cables to a common phone line. You pop the wire into the console. This is the router that connects all the cables in the house to a phone line. Did all we wanted to, right? Is there something else to do here? You're prompted to save. Is there anything else we could do here? I feel like this Sharpie is something. There's no time to brag about your stuff to Timothy. I guess. The other thing to do, use his computer. This is dangerous. <laughs> A chill rushes over you as you sit at the forbidden console. You sure about touching that keyboard right now? Crap, Timothy doesn't have his login filled out. You'll have to guess his password. Could I have actually inferred this to this point? Maybe, but I don't want to. Maybe something for a future playthrough, if such a thing happens. Let's leave. You go back to the bathroom, feeling the vague and uneasy sense that your mission is not yet complete. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go back to my room and use the only thing that matters to me. Oh, no. Oh? I thought I did the deed. I guess the game was right. It's assessment. Not done. Okay. Let's re... 
screwdriver that panel. The router is warm and is gently vibrating with activity. Yeah, I get the feeling that we did everything we're going to be doing with the router here. So we have to guess his password and do something on his computer? What is his password? There's something I can look at in this room, maybe. Hmm. Timothy has burned a mix CD called Y2K Mix. Most of the tracks seem to be from the movie The Matrix. All of which Timothy calls great driving music. Oh, look at the guitar. You can't remember ever seeing Timothy play the guitar, but here it patiently sits by his bed. Your father was a guitar player, and you vaguely remember the day he brought this electric model home for Timothy. There was some talk of a father-son band provoking intense jealousy in you. Even when your father was alive, though, it sat unused. It gives you anxiety to see it now, a means of connection to a lost soul, wasting away in the corner. Mm hmm. Bad energy from that. Okay. Back to his computer. Well... Too long, huh? I don't know. I just toss stuff out based on things in this room, I guess. Careful, you only get two more tries. Uh, I can't imagine what I would be inferring from here. He must have like a real actual password on here, right? Because he's not going to want anyone using his computer, even if he wouldn't let anyone here in, in here anyway. I make the change chance typo. It's very frequently. Goodbye. Yeah, it figures. Timothy, I can explain. I didn't. I, I wasn't. I'm going to be completely honest with you because you deserve that. I need the internet back because I... I... I want to do my summer reading homework. <laughs> wow. Looks like you died! Oh my god. I have to guess his password. What would his what would his password be? What can I infer from? I wonder if there were hints already and I just didn't think about it because I wasn't expecting this sort of thing to come up. On one hand, I kind of want to figure this out for myself. On the other hand, I'm feeling like... Just worried that I just straight up missed something. Okay, well, let's... Let's at least try a couple more things. You 
really silly. Yeah. That'd be way too silly. I just feel like that information has to be somewhere. Hmm. I definitely feel like I missed something. I just looked up what it is. And... Don't know why it would be that. But I'm going to do it because I looked it up. Very funny for me, personally. I don't know why it's that. I definitely missed something. I did later find out that the solution is to open Timothy's disk drive. It has a disk in here with water written on it in black marker. Man, the goodbye will come up, but this didn't, or doesn't, or will it? My god, it is going. Okay. We have a safe. I know how to get in now. Let's futz around. Mara, you're already in the belly of the beast. Even you have no desire to peel back this particular membrane to look beyond the bounds of our known universe into fearsome, swirling annihilation. Check his email inbox. With your, with your brother's grimy mouse to guide you, quickly peek into Timothy's inbox. Hmm. A lot of boring correspondence with the same male friends he's had since childhood. Email marketing. Uncleared spam for days. A bunch of forwarded crap from your uncle. Timothy apparently has no online social life at all. No wonder he doesn't understand you. You consider that maybe Timothy is not cognizant of just how much this punishment is, is, has hurt you. In a way, he might even think he's doing you some good. Of course, this thought immediately turns to bitter resentment. You close his inbox in disgust, rueful of your curiosity. Admin settings. <laughs> Child access. Okay. Well done! You now have full adult use of the internet. No gross out flash game or fanfiction community is off limits to you anymore. You log off, making sure to arrange all the windows back the way you found them. And we are out of here. Done, and done. Oh, Mom's out here. She's watching Titanic. She's at the fateful scene where Jack and Rose are struggling to keep warm after plunging into the sea. Rose is hoisted onto a floating door where she will just barely survive until help comes. Mom hasn't been in the living room for long. She must have been watching the rest of the movie earlier. Or, for some reason, she chose to start it here. Oh, hi, dear. Did you want dinner? I'll just have something from the fridge. Alright. Make sure you eat. This part reminds me of your father. It sort of embarrasses you that Mom would project her own story onto such young romantic leads. But, on top of that, it's a fiction. Dad didn't die in some beautiful, self-sacrificial gesture. He just didn't wake up one day. There was no exquisite last look. No goodbye. Hmm...
Yeah, I can see that. Dad's kind of like Jack. He also wanted you to live on and find things to be happy about. He did want that. I know. Of course, you had 24 years with him while Rose only had a couple of days with Jack. What does that matter? It's never enough. And I only knew Dad for 13 years. Even less if you only count the years I'm able to remember. I'm just saying the shorter time you had to know them, the more tragic it is. Mom doesn't respond further. You quickly regret this thesis you've built, one that you're not even remotely committed to, just for the sake of being contrary. But it's too late to back off. That ship has sailed, crashed, broken in two, bobbed horrifically in the darkness, and sunk into the depths of the sea. Oh, Mara. You got a letter today. A handwritten letter from a boy in Pennsylvania. What? Did you open it? I didn't realize it was for you. Jesus, Mom, why are you reading my mail? That's a federal crime. I barely looked at it. Is this some kind of online relationship? This phrase stings you at an ocean-like depth in a place you hold so secret you can barely locate it yourself. Good night, Mom. Dear PT, Thank you for the letter. It was so sweet. Your handwriting is really adorable. No, I've never tried Jones Soda before, but I will check it out now that I know it's good. <laughs> I don't- I usually don't drink soda. I'm sad that summer is almost over. I'd hoped to be more productive with my writing, and now I'm out of time. I'm not happy with most of the things I've written. Honestly, I think I'm distracted thinking about you. <laughs> I actually wrote a poem that's kind of about you. I hope you like it. Here goes. The poem is on a separate sheet of paper. It appears to have been written on a different day, in a different notebook. A walk along the dock of mind reveals my inhibitions. But while I see it's cold tonight, with none a sea to hear my cries, your love is sweet and warm and kind and sails for miles beyond my eyes to touch my face and speak those words of all our grand ambitions. Something feels strange. You didn't expect a gesture like this. You have trouble looking at it directly. You start to wonder what it says about Staggle that he'd spend all summer consumed by thoughts of you writing poetry about you, a person who nobody else wants. Does nobody else want him? You realize you've come up against an inevitable barrier, one you've been dreading all along, and that there are two possibilities. One, you very convincingly misrepresented yourself, and this poor, unsuspecting person fell for it, and now you're in too deep. Or two, Staggle has misrepresented himself to you, and you don't want the person who wrote this letter. A person just as lonely and undesirable as yourself. Why couldn't it have been different? Why couldn't you have just never written back? Oh boy. Things are getting quite heavy for Mara. They've been, but certainly like adding on to that and uncertainty with this new relationship of hers um, really compounds it all. You alright, dear? Yeah, just burned between 500 and 800 calories. Just don't exercise too hard. You don't want to hurt yourself. You grunt. Why does mom have to discourage you from being healthy? 
I'm going to the mainland soon if you want to come. You can pick out snacks for the week. Get yourself something. It does sound pretty good. Maybe a little time on the mainland will help you work out uh, these confusing thoughts about Staggle. Besides, you probably should be eating more snacks, not your exercising. You wouldn't want to be sacrificing your workout energy. Yeah, alright. Are you going now? In a few minutes. Let me know when you're ready. Hmm. I don't think there's much reason we wouldn't be ready, unless we want to, uh, you know. Check the computer, briefly. A thing that we do, and that we just spent a lot of effort last night working to enable. To your relief, Staggle is not online. You're suddenly mortified by the thought of facing him. His presence is too real for you. Too overbearing. You quickly decide that you don't want to talk to anyone right now. Besides, you have to conserve your time online, lest Timothy discovers you're back on. You turn off Instant Messenger, delete a few weeks' worth of email spam, and log off. Yeah, sounds like we're going to the mainland. Ready to go? Great, let's go. seem down today. It's nothing. Just end of the summer blues. Did something happen with that boy? No, mom. Don't you think this online communication makes it hard to really get to know a person? No. In fact, it's the opposite. You get to know people better because you get to have intelligent conversations. You don't have to get hung up on things like what brand of clothes they wear, or how much money or popularity they have, or what religion they are, or whether they're gay or fat or libertarian or whatever. You're all just people on the same level. That's a nice idea. When I was your age, I wanted a place like that too. It's not that I don't want you to have a boyfriend. You're the one who keeps saying boyfriend. You gave him your address. You're putting a lot of trust in this guy. If you'd known the condition for going to the mainland and buying snacks and be having this conversation, it might not have seemed worth it. He could be a man in his 40s looking to pick up teens. Do you have any proof of his age? Mom, I've been in this community with him for years. If there's anything I know for sure is that he's my age. Alright. Let's say he's your age. He is. Is there anything else you know about him? I know his interests. He plays the same games as me and likes the same TV shows. He writes. You learn a lot about a person through their writing. Have you seen a picture of him? Do you know his name? Aren't those kinds of superficial things to care about? Those are traditionally the first things you learn about a person, before you start writing love letters and going on dates. Nobody goes on dates, Mom. I don't give a rat's ass if what's traditional. You can't believe how hard you're defending something you're not even sure about anymore. What does Staggle even mean to you right now? Maybe you don't want to be with him, but you can't fathom the loss of him. He's still part of a community. A community so essential to your being that you can't possibly explain it to Mom. To speak you is to speak that community. You mustn't let go of that. Whatever happens with you and Staggle, you need that place. Where else would you go?